The Boy Who Loved Math, The Improbable Life of Paul Erdos by Deborah Hilligman and pictures by Liuen Pham. There once was a boy who loved map, math. He grew up to be one of the greatest mathematicians who ever lived, and it all started with a big problem. Paul Erdos lived in Budapest, Hungary, with his mama. Mama loved Paul to infinity. Paul loved Mama to infinity, too. When he was three, Mama had to go back to work as a math teacher. She didn't want anything bad to happen to Paul, so she left him with the one person she knew would take very good care of him. She left him with Fraulein. <laughs> Fraulein had too many rules. That was the problem. Paul hated rules. He hated to be told when to sit still, when to eat, when to go to see sleep. What could Paul do? He couldn't exactly solve the problem. But Paul knew that when summer came, Mama would be home with him all day, 100% of the time. So he taught himself to count really high. And then he figured out how many days it would be until summer vacation. And it made him feel much better to know the number. So Paul kept counting and thinking about numbers. One day when he was four, Paul asked a visitor when her birthday was. She told him. What year were you born, he asked. She told him. What time, she told him. <laughs> Paul thought for a moment, and then he told her how many seconds she had been alive. One billion, nine million, one hundred and fifty-two thousand and three hundred and fifty-eight seconds. <laughs> Paul liked that trick. He did it often. Wow. <laughs> Paul played with numbers. He added them together, subtracted and subtracted them. And one day he subtracted a bigger number from a smaller number. The answer was less than zero. How could a number be less than zero? Mama told him numbers below zero are called the negative numbers. Paul thought that was so cool. Now he knew for sure he wanted to be a mathematician when he grew up. But first he had to tackle another big problem. School! Mama sent him to school, of course, when it was time. But Paul and school were not a good match. Paul could not sit still for a long time. So he got up and ran around the classroom. But that was against the rules. Oh, how Paul hated the rules. How could he solve this problem? Paul told Mama he didn't want to go to school anymore. Not for one more day, for zero days. He wished he could take days away. Negative school days, he pleaded with Mama to stay home. Luckily, Mama was a worrier. She worried about germs a lot. She worried Paul could catch dangerous germs from the children at school. So she helped him solve his problem. She said he could stay home with... Fraulein. But even Fraulein was better than school. Maybe 500 times better. Fraulein and Mama did everything for Paul. They cut his meat and buttered his bread and got him dressed and tied his shoes. Well, that was great. It meant Paul could think about numbers all day. Numbers were his best friends. He could always depend on numbers to be there and behave in the same way. Numbers followed rules. He didn't like rules in life, but he liked rules and numbers. And so Paul turned seven, then eight, then nine. And when Paul was 10, he fell in love. He fell in love with prime numbers. Prime numbers are special. They can't be divided evenly. A prime number can be divided only by itself in one. The first prime number is two, but that is the only even prime number. All the other prime numbers are odd. The numbers three, five, and seven are prime. But not all odd numbers are prime. Nine isn't prime because you can multiply three times three and get nine. Paul had a lot of questions about prime numbers. Do they go on forever? Why is it that the higher up you go, the farther apart the prime numbers are? Paul loved to think about prime numbers. When he got older, Paul wanted to go to high school. He liked school a million times better now. He made many friends. 
people his age who loved math and were really good at it too. Paul and his friends did math together all over Budapest, but Paul was the best. He loved being at the top in math and at the top of towers and mountains and buildings too. He thought about math, whatever he was doing, wherever he was. By the time Paul was 20, he was already famous around the world for his math. People called him the magician from Budapest, but he still did not know how to do his laundry or cook his food or butter his bread. This was not a problem. He still lived at home and Mama still did everything for him. But then one day, when Paul was 21, some mathematicians invited him to go to England to work on his math. Could he survive out on the world on his own? He rode the train by himself. He met the mathematicians. They all went to dinner. Everyone else talked and ate, but Paul stared at his bread. He stared at his butter. He didn't know how to butter his bread. Finally, he took his knife, <laughs> put some butter on it, and spread it on his bread. Phew, he did it. It wasn't so hard, he said. Even though he could now butter his own bread, Paul soon realized that he didn't fit into the world in a regular way. He wasn't the kind of person to cook or clean or drive a car or have a wife and children. He wasn't the kind of person to live in one place and have one job. He was the kind of person to do math all the time. And he still didn't like to follow the rules. So he invented his own way to live. Here is what he did. Paul would get on an airplane with two small suitcases filled with everything he owned, a few clothes, and some math notebooks. He might have $20 in his pocket, or less. And he flew from New York to Indiana and to Los Angeles. He flew across the world from Toronto to Australia. I have no home, he declared. The world is my home. And wherever he went, when he got there, the same thing would happen. A mathematician would meet him and take him home. The mathematician and Paul worked on math. Paul played with the mathematician's epsilons. That's what Paul called children, because an epsilon is a very small amount in math. And just as Mama had done, friends all over the world took care of Paul. They did his laundry and cooked his food and cut open his grapefruit and paid his bills. Now Paul wasn't the easiest house guest. He made messes, big messes, like the time he got impatient and opened a tomato juice carton by stabbing it with a knife. And he often woke up his host at 4, <laughs> four o'clock in the morning and said, my brain is open. That meant he was ready to do math. He wanted to do math about 19 hours a day every single day. Wow. One time, when he was a young man, he broke a rule that got him into big trouble. He climbed over a fence to look at a radio tire tower. He got arrested. The police thought he was a spy. The FBI thought he was a spy, so they sp spied on him for years after that. Why did friends all over the world put up with him and take care of him? Call him Uncle Paul and love him. Because Paul Erdos was a genius and he shared his brain. He helped people with their math problems and gave them more problems to do. Plus he was a math matchmaker. He introduced mathematicians all over the world to one another so they could work together. Paul knew that mathematician plus mathematician plus mathematician equals more and better math. Paul and his friends did so much great math. The work in math called number theory, combinatorics, the problem in probabilistic method, and set theory. Paul showed his friends how to do this math in new and better ways. He even started some new kinds of math. Some of the math Paul and his friends worked on gave us better computers and better search engines on the computer, also better codes for spies to use. Uncle Paul, Paul was generous with his brain and his money, too. Whatever money he had, he gave away. He gave money to poor people, and he offered prize money for unsolved math problems. Even when Paul got very old, he still did math. He did math while he played chess. He did math while he drank coffee. 
Lots and lots of coffee. He thought about math while he played ping pong with his best friends. Paul said he never wanted to stop doing math, and he didn't. To stop doing math, Paul said, was to die. So Paul left this world while he was at a math meeting. <laughs> All over the world, mathematicians still talk about the lo and love Uncle Paul, even people who never met him. They talk about their Erdos number. If you did math with Paul, you get an Erdos number of one. If you worked with someone who worked with Paul, your Erdos number is two. People are so proud of their Erdos numbers. And there's Paul and the different people that he brought together. A long time ago, there was a boy who loved math. Numbers were his best friends. He grew up to be the man who loved math. Numbers and people were his best friends. Paul Erdos had no problem with that. And here's a note from the author, and then a note from the illustrator.